Okay, um, this is going to be a doozy. Um, today we are going to talk about the Twilight movies, and I am going to go ahead and, you know, do a, a little caveat here, um, which is that the movies are based on books. Um, the filmmakers, I feel, did the best that they could um, with the source material and with um, meddling execs and, you know, people that wanted to get the movies pumped out as fast as possible uh, to capitalize on a fading trend. Um, so if we keep that in mind, that's going to kind of color my whole review of this. Anyway, let's get started. Um, we are going to start with the trigger warnings. Um, I'm not going to cover every single one. I'm going to cover the major ones. Um, I do encourage people to check out the IMDb Parents Guide before they watch a movie if they're okay with being spoiled, um, because there are spoilers on those pages. But if you're worried about not being able to handle something, it is a very good resource um, and very easy to find. Anyway, um, on to trigger warnings. The big one. The really, really big one is going to be abusive relationships. Um, Edward and Bella's relationship hits so many of the items on abuse checklists. So many. Um, I'm actually going to link one of the checklists in the description um, so that you can, you know, see for yourself. I'm not going to go into any of these, you know, in depth. I'm just going to mention them briefly and move on. Um, the other major one is sexism, um, which, like, the, the women are not treated very well in this series. Um, they're either, they're either terrible people, um, or they all want babies, every single one of them. Um, and even if they don't want babies, once they have a baby, they really, really want that baby, and it's like they're, you know, totally fine with it you know, no problems whatsoever, no postpartum depression, nothing. Um, so the women are not treated very well. A lot of the, it does tie into the abuse thing. Um, a lot of them are abused in various ways. Um, another big trigger, um, especially in the second movie is suicide. Um, Bella cliff diving. Uh, she said it was recreational, but it's pretty clear that she wanted to die. Um, then later with Edward's public sparkling episode, um, that also ties back into the abuse of like, he decided that since she wasn't going to be there, he didn't want to live. Um, that's kind of ooky. Um, but that is a major theme in the second book is people like wanting to die. Um, or second movie, book two. Um, but anyway, another big trigger is rape. Um, with Rosalie's backstory, with how um, Jacob treats Bella in, I think it was the third movie, when he does that, you know, unwanted kiss thing that's pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty uncomfortable. Um, and just the general disregard for um, people, especially women, uh, saying no to a situation. Um, the, the movies, um, and the source material have a lot of problems with consent. Um, and all right, moving on, we've got racism, um, which is mostly centered around the Native American characters. Um, they are often referred to as animals, um, which I know they're werewolves, well, shapeshifters, um, but that's no excuse to constantly refer to them with animalistic terms um, and to, like, fetishize them and do other ooky stuff. Um, the movies, at least, did, from what I understand, cast mostly, if not all, Native Americans for those roles, so that is a step up from a lot of movies. Um, I commend them for that. But that doesn't change the fact that those characters are very problematic. Um, they're also, you know, the wise Native Americans. They've got magic and all sorts of stuff. Um, 
So that is a problem, um, even though the movies, I think, tried to make the best of the source material again. Um, pregnancy and body horror um, together uh, is especially prevalent, of course, in the um, Breaking Dawn Part 1. Um, if you're sensitive to uh, to body horror especially because the pregnancy is very rapid and it really does a number on Bella. Um, and if you are sensitive to that stuff, you may find that part of the movie really hard to watch, especially the birth scene. Um, the birth scene is just bloody as all get out and it's very violent. Um, they're very explicit with what's happening to her. Um, so yeah, again, if you have trouble with that kind of stuff, you might want to skip that. Um, and then of course the, uh, big part of Breaking Dawn, the very end of Breaking Dawn part one, and then Breaking Dawn part two. Um, and well, we also saw it in, um, Eclipse, but, uh, pedophilia, that's another big one. Um, First with Quill, I think it was. Um, I'm a little bit fuzzy on names, but um, the werewolf that imprinted on a two-year-old, um, <laughs> that was a nice little introduction to imprinting there. Um, well, imprinting on children, um, which is really creepy. Um, and then with Jacob imprinting on a newborn, um, that has all sorts of really, really nasty implications, especially considering that that baby is going to be um, of age in seven years. That's a problem. Um, if you are sensitive to that stuff, you probably don't want to watch the last movie at all, um, because it kind of creeps in. Um, Anyway, those are the big triggers. There are a lot of other ones. Um, there's general violence. The fight scenes can get kind of intense. Um, and the, the violence is, it's bloody, but it's bloody in that PG-13 way. Um, some people can handle it, some people can't. Uh, it's just good to know that there is some violence before you go into the movie. Um, anyway, I am actually going to talk now about some things that the movies do right, um, because I just listed all the, you know, major problematic stuff. Um, I actually want to focus on some things that I think were done well um, in the movies. First of all, um, I do think the movies were much better than the books. Uh, the books were terrible. They were terribly written. Um, they featured terrible characters. Uh, and it was just all around really unpleasant. Um, kind of hilarious, but unpleasant. Um, so I think the movies are a significant step up from the source material. Um, overall, the soundtracks are nice. I enjoy them. Um, I know they're not everyone's cup of tea, uh, especially with the more poppy rock kind of stuff in there, but um, I think they're serviceable. They fit the mood. Um, they, in general, are pretty well done. There might be a couple missteps, but um, overall, music's good. Um, the scenery is kind of amazing um, because of where they shot. You know, there's just beautiful forests. Um, you know, the meadow thing. Um, there's a lot of nice architecture shots. Um, the actual cinematography is serviceable, but not like spectacular. But I really do enjoy um, the set design and the, you know, scenery in general. I also think that the actors do their best. They are given terrible characters to work with. Um, and a terrible story to work with, and I think they perform admirably. Most of them take it pretty seriously. Um, not all of them, but that's okay. Um, it seems like the ones that don't take it seriously are at least having fun with it. Um, but, like, don't hate on Kirsten Stewart and Robert Pattinson, because they took roles that they thought were going to help their careers. They had no idea how bad it was going to be. Um, and 
I I think they are both good actors. Um, they just need better things to work with than what they got with the Twilight movies. Um, Charlie is a fan favorite. He was a good character. I did not like how he reacted in Eclipse to Bella breaking her hand um, after Jacob, you know, assaulted her. But, <laughs> but, uh, he overall is a pretty good character. He's good comic relief. He seems to have a pretty level head on his shoulders. Shoulders, yeah. Um, but he was a very enjoyable part of the movies for me. Um, and in general, the humor in the movies is very nice. Um, it's nice to see that the filmmakers kind of knew that these books were terrible. Um, and they knew that they were going to have to you know, add some humor in order to make this stuff bearable. Um, and I think they did a good job. I, I really enjoyed the tone of the movies. Um, and I, I think again, the filmmakers did the best they could with the source material. Um, for some specific things, I am going to focus on Eclipse and Breaking Dawn Part 1. Now, in Eclipse, um, I really liked the improvement with Jasper's story. Um, because it showed that he was very clearly in love with, I think her name was Maria, um, the vampire that was using him and, you know, with the vampire wars and stuff. Um, but it showed that he was very clearly in love. He thought that they were going to be together forever. So it humanized him more, um, as opposed to in the books where it was just kind of implied that he was just a mindless killing machine and he just enjoyed killing and was like, oh yeah, Marie is cool too, um, but I just want to kill things. So it, it gave him more of a sympathetic um, bent, I guess. And um, Eclipse also, you know, had Leah. Um, Leah is a fan favorite, um, like Charlie, and she was treated very poorly by the text and very poorly um, by the movies, but I think they did the best they could with her to make her more sympathetic than she was in the text. Um, and I enjoyed seeing her um, as part of the wolf pack. Um, I thought she was an interesting addition to it um, and that her actress did very well. Um, Breaking Dawn Part 1, I really enjoyed seeing Charlie at the wedding. Um, that was another good bit of humor. Um, where, you know, Charlie was clearly struggling with the idea of letting go of his daughter and, you know, he kind of, uh, made not exactly a scene, but, you know, just kind of said some stuff that was a little off and, you know, um, was just generally amusing. Um, and the other major thing in Breaking Dawn Part 1 was Bella's pregnancy makeup. Um, I really loved that. I don't know how much was digital and how much was practical, but the makeup, um, I mean, it made her look like she was dying. It was wonderful um, because it really illustrated what that pregnancy was doing to her. And I commend whoever, um, whoever worked on that makeup, whether it be, you know, people that were doing CGI or just people that were doing, you know, like practical makeup effects. Um, I think it turned out wonderfully. Um, and it really added to the, uh, the tone of that part of the movie. Um, also they included a fight scene, which was nice. Um, uh, the movies did pretty good in general about making things more tense and more exciting than the books did. They included more fight scenes. They included more conflicts in general. Um, that fight scene at the end of Breaking Dawn Part 1 was actually kind of intense. Like, you knew everyone was going to get out okay, but there was still that moment of, oh no, you know, the, the wolves got them pinned, you know, what's going to happen? Um, so that was really nice to see. Um, I, I enjoyed that. And Breaking Dawn Part 2 had that other fight scene. Um, the dream sequence, I thought that was inventive, but, I mean, predictable, but, like, it was a good way to include a fight scene um, while still staying true, if you want to call it that, to the book. Um, 
Anyway, now I'm going to do what I thought was kind of terrible. Um, the quality of the cinematography varies wildly between movies and even between scenes. Um, I enjoyed it in general, but that doesn't mean it was good. Um, Breaking Dawn did not need to be two movies. It would have been a little bit, um, a little bit rushed, I think, in one movie, but they could have done it because there just was not enough material to stretch it into two movies. Um, and of course, there's the uh, catatonia scene in New Moon, the you know one where the months are written above Bella's head and she's just sitting there staring out the window. Um, I understand that they had to illustrate a really, really ridiculous part of the book and try to keep to the spirit of it, but I still think that was very poorly done. Um, and then, in general, the characters are very flat. I understand that the source material is terrible, but it it feels like, in general, the filmmakers did not do a very good job of making the characters uh, more, you know, three-dimensional. Um, but all that said, I did actually enjoy these movies. Um, I think that they're good to have on when you're in a group and you can kind of make fun of stuff or, you know, point out weird things in the movies or um, just sit back and enjoy a relatively mindless popcorn marathon of movies, whatever. Um, but overall, I don't think the movies are terrible. Um, they're not good, certainly, but there are good parts about them. And I do think that if you can handle all of the really icky stuff in them, they are worth a watch. Um, just because of the stuff that is good about them. Um, so that does it for this review, I suppose. Um, I may wind up redoing this once I get a better handle on exactly what I'm going to do for this channel, but, um, for now, this is my thoughts on the Twilight movies, and hopefully I will have another review up soon. Thank you very much, and I will see you on the dark side of the moon.